On New Year's Day 2026, while most of us were celebrating, SpaceX's Vice President of Engineering made an announcement that sent shockwaves through the space community. Starting immediately, the company will relocate 4,400 Starlink satellites to a lower orbit. Not a routine adjustment, an emergency reconfiguration. And the reason? The collision risk in Earth's orbit has increased by 200% in just six months. Welcome back. This isn't a distant problem or theoretical concern. This is happening right now, 550 kilometers above your head, and what SpaceX revealed raises a question nobody wants to answer. Have we already crossed the point of no return? Let me take you back three weeks, December 17th, 2025. A Starlink satellite designated 35956, launched just a month earlier, suddenly went dark. Not a clean shutdown, an energetic event. The spacecraft began venting propellant, tumbling out of control, releasing what SpaceX called a small number of trackable objects. Within hours, commercial tracking company Leo Labs reported something more alarming, hundreds of debris fragments, each one now circling Earth at 17,000 miles per hour, invisible threats to every satellite in that orbital shell. And here's what keeps engineers awake at night. They still don't know exactly what happened. Something inside the spacecraft itself failed catastrophiter. Now here's the number that matters. Between December 2024 and May 2025, SpaceX conducted 144,000 collision avoidance maneuvers. That's 800 maneuvers per day, one every two minutes, a 200% increase from the previous six months. The traffic jam isn't coming, it's here. So what's SpaceX's solution? Move 4,400 satellites down from 550 kilometers to 480 kilometers altitude, half their constellation, dropping 70 kilometers closer to Earth. The logic is counterintuitive. Lower orbit means denser atmosphere, which means if a satellite dies, it falls out of the sky faster. At 550 kilometers, a dead satellite takes over four years to decay naturally. At 480 kilometers, a few months, 80% reduction. But there's another reason. Below 500 kilometers, there are significantly fewer satellites and debris objects. It's less crowded down there. For now, we're not solving the orbital debris problem. We're running away from it. And here's what SpaceX isn't saying loudly. This entire operation must be completed in 2026. Why the urgency? Solar minimum. Our sun operates on an 11-year cycle. We're just past solar maximum, when solar activity heats Earth's upper atmosphere, creating drag that clears debris. But starting in 2027, we enter solar minimum. The atmosphere contracts, density drops, dead satellites at any altitude suddenly take years longer to decay. If SpaceX doesn't move these satellites before solar minimum hits, they'll be stuck in the most dangerous orbital zone for years. Now let's talk about the bigger picture. SpaceX currently operates approximately 9,300 satellites out of 11,000 active satellites total in Earth orbit. One company owns 85% of all active satellites humanity has ever launched. The entire rest of the world, every nation, every company, every space agency combined operates the other 15%. And at the United Nations Security Council meeting on December 29th, China's representative was blunt. The unchecked proliferation of commercial satellite constellations by a certain country has given rise to pronounced safety and security challenges. They didn't name SpaceX, they didn't have to. The American response? These satellites provide critical disaster preparedness, search and rescue capabilities, reliable communications for underserved communities. Both sides are right, and both sides are afraid of what comes next because here's the scenario nobody wants to discuss openly. Last year, a research paper calculated what would happen if Earth lost the ability to control satellites. Solar flare, cyber attack, doesn't matter. Once we lose active control, how long before cascading collisions make certain orbital zones unusable forever? Their answer, three days. In solar minimum conditions, we would have three days before the first catastrophic collision triggers a chain reaction. They call it Kessler syndrome. One collision creates debris, that debris hits other satellites. More debris, more collisions, an exponential cascade that could render low Earth orbit unusable for generations. Are we already in the early stages? SpaceX's 200% increase in collision avoidance suggests we might be, and yet Amazon's project Kuiper plans to launch thousands more this year. China announced plans for over 10,000 satellites. The question isn't whether orbital space is becoming crowded. The question is whether we've already passed the point where we can manage it. So what do you think? Is SpaceX doing the responsible thing? Or are they just making room for more? Should there be international limits on how many satellites one company can operate? And here's the harder question. If an American company's satellites collide with a Chinese launch, creating debris that damages a European spacecraft, who's responsible? Write your thoughts in the comments, because this isn't an engineering problem anymore. 
It's a question of how humanity governs shared resources when there are no borders and no enforcement. SpaceX says this reconfiguration will take all of 2026 coordinated with other operators and US Space Command. And when it's done, what happens to the orbital zone they left behind? Does it become too dangerous for new satellites? Or do other companies rush in to claim the newly vacated space? Within five years, we'll know whether this was a solution or just delaying the inevitable. Thank you for watching, and remember, the next time you use satellite internet or GPS, you're relying on a system that's one bad day away from catastrophic failure. Until next time.